It is lovely to be here. Hello. Hi, come on in. Nice to see you. So, it is really, really lovely to be here with you all on a Sunday today. And I'm just to share for new people who might not know, I'm Annie. Um, this is Dan. Some of you are getting to know us. And it's just lovely to be able to share with you on a Sunday morning together today. Um, so, just to share a little bit about what we're going to be doing today, before we start kind of properly our series with you in September, today we're going to share the service that we've been doing when we're not with you on a Sunday. So when we go and talk at other churches about Tekora and what's happening in Albania, we thought it'd be really lovely for you guys here to know what we're doing and what we're saying. So we're going to share some of those things together today, but also thinking a little bit about what does that mean for us? here at Vale, supporting the work in Albania, but also supporting what God is doing in mission here and there. So hopefully that's an idea of what we'll be doing together today. Before we worship together, a few notices that I've been asked to share. It's always hard when you're starting at a church, sharing their notices. I'm hoping that they will become our notices. So if there are things that I say wrongly, just put your hand up and say, actually, this is what I meant for that notice. Mm -hmm. So first thing is that next week is a bring and share service. But that means don't just bring your picnic, which I think you're having together afterwards, but also Come ready to share what God's been saying to you this week. That service isn't going to be recorded and hopefully it's going to be a time where we can, as a congregation, share what God has been saying to each of us together. Is that all right, Kev? Great. Lovely. Um, next one to share is about the induction service for Dan and I on the 7th of September. First of all, we really, really hope that everyone is able to come. Um, we're really looking forward to a time together to share and to be able to look at what God is going to be doing with all of us together. And one thing that we want to share with the people that are coming and with each other is cakes. So Elaine says we need more cakes. So if you'd like to make a cake, speak to Elaine so that we've got enough. Also, we need more people to be sharing with the, and um, doing the setting up and organising. So Elaine says, please can you speak to her if you'd like to be part of that. Um, last thing to say for notices is that today, this morning, uh, is a summer Sunday, so there isn't an opportunity for the kids to be going out. They'll be with us in the service, but at the back on the table there, there are things for kids to be doing when they'd like to. Dan and I are speaking, as you know, it's absolutely fine if you need to go to the back at any point during the service. If you want to be doing that together, absolutely fine. Don't worry at all about um, feeling that you're at home and noise is not an issue. If you've spent any time with Dan and I, you'll know that noise is definitely not a problem. So please use that as you'd like to. Um, last thing is I've been asked to look at Maureen and she has something to do. So I will do that. Well, this week it's going to be, or next week, it's going to be Dan's birthday. Oh. So I'm having a party. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to read Psalm 136 together, and then we're going to um, hand over to Russ for some singing together as well. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, his love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens, his love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters, his love endures forever. Who made the great lights, his love endures endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. Lord, as we come to you this morning, we acknowledge that all good things come from you, that you promise to love us and to sustain us in every way. Lord, we look forward to sharing about what you have been doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning from me. 
and uh, it's good to see you. Good to see some new faces as well this morning, and, or some fresh faces, and, and uh, it's lovely to see you here. And to you at home too, welcome this morning as you join us uh, in our time of worship and praise and teaching together. As a worship leader, I have to tell you that one of our greatest influences is the Psalms. I think every worship leader probably looks at the Psalms more than anything else. Actually, um, it is said that, oh dear, yeah, it is said that the uh, um, songbook, uh, the, the Psalms are the greatest songbook for a Christian. And it contains everything there about all your emotions and everything else. I want to just read one, two lines from Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. And at the end of that psalm it says, My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature Praise his holy name forever and ever. And I wonder if you uh, know what the word exalt actually means. It means to praise, to lift up, um, to praise, and in this case to praise his name. Because his name is the name above all names. It says that in Philippians where he says, I exalted him above all names. And... Uh, so we're going to sing a couple of songs that uh, just pronounce this together. And once again, they are songs that we sing to one another in the main. Um, I might get changed that halfway through, so listen very carefully. Um, but we're saying to each other, he is exalted, the king is exalted on high. He is the Lord and he reigns on high. And we're singing it to one another because that's why we gathered this morning to remind each other uh, he is the Lord and he is exalted. So would you like to stand with me if you're able? <laughs> he is exalted. The king is exalted on high. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. I will praise him. He is exalted forever. Exalted. spirit so we can sing it to him so let's sing you are exalted you the king is exalted on high let's sing again you are exalted the king is exalted on high i will praise you you are exalted forever exalted Lord 
and he reigns on high. to worship you this morning. We come to worship you in spirit and truth and ask, Lord, that you come in power amongst us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you would come and just fill us full of your love, full of your creation, full of who you are and what you've done for each one of us. So we want to bless you this morning. May what we offer to you come in power to, in your name that it would bless your ears this morning for your glory and in your name. We're going to sing another song. We have sung it here before. It may be a bit rusty to you. It's called All Praise to Him, the God of Light, who formed the mountains by His might. All praise to Him, the God of Light, who formed the mountains by his might? All praise to him who names the stars that see his fame in skies afar. All praise to him who reigns in love, who guides the galaxies above, yet bends to hear our every prayer with sovereign power and tears. to him whose love is seen in Christ the Son, the servant King, who left behind his glorious throne to pay the ransom for his own. Oh, praise to him who humbly came to bear our sorrow, sin and shame, who lived to die. To him whose power imparts the love of God within our hearts, the spirit of all truth and peace, the fount of joy and holiness, to Father, Son, and Spirit.
Son, and Spirit now. Our souls we lift, our wills we bow, to you the triune God we praise, with loving hearts our song of praise. You're in good voice this morning. Bless you. I hope it blesses the Lord what you'd given to him this morning. Annie. Hello again. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of a focus on Albania today. And those of you who get to know us will know that we love a good quiz. So we've got one of our oldest friends is here at the moment. And she also knows that we love our quizzes and all things to do with learning new things about new places. So, Chris, can I have the next, the first slide? So you will have noticed on your seats there is a bit of paper, a bit of a collage there. And what we're going to do is, these are all things that are to do with Albania. Okay, now I'm expecting you all to get 22 out of 22 straight away, but you may need a little bit of help. So, um, and my, my kids who are here... Um, just to recognise that you probably know a lot of these, so maybe don't jump in with the answers straight away, but if people need some help, that's fine. <laughs> so, first one, does anybody know what these things that look like chicken but actually aren't? It's a particularly bad picture. Anyone got any ideas? If you do, put your hand up. Best thing to do, straight up, Talia. Okay, all right, Talia, what are they? What are they? No, they're not sausages. Sausage. No. Um, the... They're a street food. They're, they are petula. So what, what are petula, Talia? Petula is donut, but with no like icing and no stuff. Yeah, exactly. So they are donuts without your fancy stuff that you put on them. But in Albania, you dip them, you can have them either savoury or sweet, and you either have them with white cheese or you have them with honey. And they're like a really normal thing that people have for breakfast. Okay. Number two. Number, number two. two. this one? Yep. Anyone know number two? Anyone do Instagramming? Put your hand up. Got a bit of Instagram account. I do, actually, sorry. <laughs> if you've got an Instagram account, you might probably And if you were Albanian. Know, you won't know this. But if you were Albanian, you would know who this is. He's one of the famous um, Albanian influencers, and his name is Kojic Bratci, and he is famous for telling people to leave the country, sadly. Yeah. Number three. Now, this is someone that you probably don't recognise her at all, but she is incredibly famous in the world of um, technology, essentially. So, anyone heard of ChatGPT? Kids at the back, no, okay, no, you've no, not, no. never heard of it, never used it for your work at all, obviously. Now, she was one of the founders of ChatGPT and is really big in the world of, of OpenAI. And her name is Mira Marati. Number four, can anyone see what that is? She's been singing about mountains. Can you see some mountains there? Yeah. Just about. Why? Yeah, it is a dam. Very good. Yeah, it's a hydroelectric dam because the 100% of Albania's entire electricity comes from hydroelectric. Isn't that pretty impressive, eh? Kev, can I just ask you to put a few more chairs out? So, um, number, five. number five. Again, obviously no one knows what this is. <laughs> exactly. So... This is hemp, and Albania is sadly both illegally and legally one of the biggest exporters of cannabis, but also cannabis for use for uh, cannabis oil for medicinal purposes as well. In Europe. Yeah. In Europe. Yeah. Number six, if you're a certain generation, you might know who this is. He was very famous once upon a time when Albania was very much a closed country. Anyone know his name? Number six? Kind of... Can't pronounce his name. Anyone know? He was the Amy, Albanian dictator. Amy, I reckon you might know. It Ember is Hodger. Ember Hodger, yes. Ember Hodger. Well done. Number seven, back to kind of nowadays. Number seven, it was quite a famous person on the global scale, especially in NATO recently. Number seven, see who that is? You can see what he's doing. He's next to the Italian Prime Minister there. 
That is Enver. Uh, that's not a joke. That's not. That's <laughs> Eni Rama. Eni Rama is the current, current prime minister. He's a head of state, and he's just he's um, doing a deal with Italy there to take all of Italy's refugees. So anyone's going to wreck to try and seek asylum in, in Italy now comes to Albania. Now I don't know whether Zach, our friend here, Zach, would you just stand up and show us your kit? So, Zach has come with the Albanian kit today, and do you know who it is, Zach, or what he did in the Euros? Anyone know what he did in the Euros? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, it doesn't matter who won the Euros, everyone. It's seconds. not important. All that's important is that Albania scored the fastest goal. And they will have that for, well, until someone beats it, they will have that for a very, very long time. So if you ask any Albanians about the Euros, all they'll say is, we scored the fastest goal, did you know? Because that is a really big claim to fame. His name is so. Eddie Barami, if you're interested. Uh, the next one is number nine. You see number nine up there? It looks like it looks like the Maldives stand, doesn't it? A bit like the Maldives, you see that on there? Probably can't from that angle. It's beautiful beaches. Does anyone know what this resort is? Isaac, you went there recently? Not there, me. The other one. Miranda? Yeah, Nira. Yes, Miranda. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's, it's, it's Yeah. So Albania has got loads of gorgeous beaches and and kind of is starting to be known as a tourist centre uh, as well. Okay, number 10. I have no idea who this was, just like to say. Do you want to know Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Can you see a bit of that? Yeah. yeah. So this is Elisa Dushku, and she was in a Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She's also Albanian. Um, 11. Yeah, so this is Yuri, who is the pastor of the church in Albania at Tekora, and he is an amazing man. Okay, number 12. It looks like some houses made out of doors and corrugated metal, doesn't it? And that's because this is one of the first communities we planted in Albania. There was no one there um, in that particular part of uh, Tirana. Certainly no one knew anything about Jesus. And now the entire community, by one family, I think, uh, now comes to the church or has given their faith to the Christ. And number 13, I reckon lots of you will know who this is. Anyone who's a bit young. It is Dua Lipa, yeah. So she is Albanian, um, although lives here and many of you will know her music. Okay, number 14. It's that building right in the so middle there. That's old, it looks like a bit of um, Jenga. <laughs> This is the tallest building in Albania, a building all over Albania now, but this is just an example of that. Uh, it's about 36 storeys high and it has the map on the side. It looks like it's pushed out uh, by bits of Jenga. And number 15. Don't know if anyone will know this, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this, but in, in Albania we... Um, we have two centres, I'm going to say a little bit about one in Durez and one in Tirana. And this is the land next to the centre in Durez that is a vacant space that we'd love to be able to buy for the next centre there in Durez. Okay, 16, does anyone know what that sign is? NATO, exactly. And Albania is a member of NATO from 2009. 17. Sorry? It it's the team in Tekora, exactly. So these are all of the people who are working for Tekora in Albania. Number 18. Yeah, so this is the, one of the boats that has been coming across. And about three, well, um, two years ago, there was a stat that 1% of all of the um, Albanian males were on some of those ships on some of those boats, which is a huge number of the population, isn't it? Remember, imagine that one in your town, one in a hundred men are leaving. And it's one of the major issues in Albania at the moment. Number 19, anyone not know who this is? <laughs> it's Lionel Messi, isn't it? It, it is Lionel Messi. What's he, what's, what's, he isn't Albanian, I'm sorry. Number 19, what's they got to do with Albania? What's, what's going on there? Can anyone see that? It's actually a large painting of Lionel Messi, like several stories high, 
in Tehran. There's loads of these murals throughout the city. So if you go there, it's lots of old tenement blocks, but now they encourage local artists to beautify the place. And Lionel Messi is one of those done by an Argentinian artist. Number 20. Lots of points if you get this. It is, it's, yeah, exactly. It's Skanderberg, who is the kind of national hero of Albania, and he kind of fought off the Ottomans years and years and years ago, so he's really held up. Okay, 21. Bunker. It's a bunker, yes. <laughs> so in Albania, there are 300,000 of these little bunkers all around the country, because under communism, an alarm would sound and everybody had to run to their nearest bunker because it was such a closed country, the kind of government said, oh, people are going to be trying to um, come and invade our country and so you need to make sure you know where to go. And they're still there now. Very lastly, does anyone not know that, who this last one is? Of course, it's Mother Teresa. But you might not know, even though she was in Macedonia, Macedonia for a long time, Yes, right. She was born in Macedonia, and she was also in Calcutta, that's where she's famous, working in some of the, the poorest places in the world. She was ethne actually ethnically Albanian. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a very, very quick overview. Again, I'm really conscious there might be some people who are sitting there going, this is all very well, but I've got no clue even where Albania actually is. So, just in case you're not sure, it's there. Okay? So, Greece at the bottom, Italy opposite. And the two cities there, Tirana and Dures, are where Tepora has been working. Might recognise Corfu there as well yeah. as the bottom. So, next slide, please. So, what we wanted to do today is to just say a little bit about what's gone before and how we can be here with you today and being the ministers at Vale now together. So, we went out to Albania in 2014 and... Honestly, when we first went, went, we were really shocked. We'd been living in Africa before, and yet there was a kind of poverty in a way that it was more that people had stopped noticing. And so we set up the NGO, Tekora. Now, Tekora literally just means at the bridge in Albanian. And this is the bridge that... Oh, sorry. sorry. Chris, was it? Yeah. Um, this was the bridge that... Um, part of the reason why we physically chose that name but the other reason was because actually we noticed in that area there were many many communities which were living separately and so we wanted to be a bridge a community center between those communities and so when Tekora was set up in 2015 it wasn't that we wanted to set up a charity but rather to have a vision to bring about that mission of Tekora and what is that mission thanks Dan is to build bridges between people, building them up in community with God at the centre, which is exactly what we're wanting to be about here, isn't it? Which is exactly what we want God to be doing in our communities, wherever we are in the world. And central to that vision was these five programme areas that work together to bring about that flourishing community. People aren't viewed as individual parts, as education needs or health needs, but as people who are valued and loved by God. So fast forward to now, and there is this team of amazing Albanians that we have been privileged to serve alongside. And the reason why we have been able to come with you and be here at Vale, because this team is now flourishing and working together in this new season. But to really understand what goes on at Tekora, I'm just going to share some stories of the people that we work with. Now, you might need to just engage your imagination just a little bit now. So, first of all, I'm a Mal. I'm 75. I live a few minutes from the Tekora Centre in Tirana. I'd seen it years ago, before the pandemic. But then, in 2019, I had a stroke. At first, I couldn't do anything, but then I was doing better, walking on my own with a stick outside and managing to meet friends for coffee. And then I got COVID in 2021, and for ages, I felt like I was going to die. I felt like I lost all my energy. Everything was such hard work, and life felt pretty pointless. I couldn't walk around the apartment, and my wife had to do everything. My wife heard that the physios from the centre could come to our apartment. I didn't see the point, really. But they've been coming for a while now, 
and I've been following what they're saying. I don't have much else to do. And I've got stronger. I can walk around the apartment now by myself. I can manage the stairs with help. And so I can go to the cafe. I started to chat to others at the Tecora Centre too. There's a group for older people. I'm thinking I might go along. I've never needed to have much to do with others before. But as I get older, I'm realising that maybe I do now. So much of the work that Tecora has with older people is it focused on enabling them to come into community when many have felt so isolated. As we said, there's a massive problem in Albania with many, many younger people leaving the country and leaving their parents at home alone. Okay, next one, please. I'm Gersi. I'm 15. I see my older brother leave and most of his friends. Lots of them are in Germany. Some went on the boats to England. I just wanted to be somewhere else. They're all working in manual labour. I hurt my arms when I was a kid, so that isn't an option for me. But I can't deny I did want to leave. It just doesn't seem like there's any hope for someone like me. I've been connected to Tecora for a while now. I've been to homework club, pray and pray, and I know that God cares for me and my family. My mum was baptised last year. But until recently, I couldn't really see what my future looked like. Then the team at Tecora started a new positive choices group. We're thinking about what we could do at high school, considering different career options, interviews, CVs. I really think I can graduate now, and I can see it matters. Maybe go to university. We've had people who look like me, but older, come and speak about what they're doing for their jobs. One man spoke to me about studying accountancy at university, and now he's working for a company. I really think I might be able to do the same. Knowing that there might be a chance of me getting a job to earn enough for my family and I don't have to leave Albania is exciting. I love my home and my family. I want to be here and have a life here. And I'm starting to believe that maybe God has a plan for me that I can trust. I'm Liria. I'm 35 and I live in Durez. I've had a good life. I graduated from university and I thought that everything was set. I had my first child and then my second was born. And from the beginning, we knew he had problems and needed lots of support. But as he got older, the medical problems just seemed to get more and more. I've seen so many specialists being given so much information. It felt like I wasn't being a mum anymore, just managing all the issues he had. I can't work now as my son needs me all the time. And my husband has to work away to have enough money for the medical equipment, therapy and more. I heard about the Tecora Centre through a friend. At first, I thought it would just be more therapy, and I couldn't see how we could manage. But quickly, after the first assessment, really, I could see that this place was different. Jenny, the physio, really talked to me, and my son. She took time out to work out what was needed. Didn't just give me a list of things to do. And then, I noticed that my child liked to come for therapy. It wasn't just stretches like he'd been doing before, but he was learning how to do things to help him to be part of what we do at home. We have a group for mums at Tecora, mums who I can actually talk to, who finally understand what it's like to have your world turned upside down. I started to come along to another group at Tecora too. It's a group where we talk about our faith, that I can come with my kids and not feel like they're being judged. I'm starting to feel I can be myself, that just maybe God has a plan for my life, and that Tecora is a place where I can belong and feel at home. So in rehab, and we have a rehab clinic at each centre, we're not just doing physio. I love physio, but it's not the only thing. We're working with families, and the physio team there are working with those families who are impacted by people with disability, helping families to know that they're loved by God, supported by each other. And lastly, Mustafi. I'm Mustafi. I'm nine. I'm from Iran. I live in Albania now. I'm not sure how long I've been here because we've travelled for so long. I know we used to live in Iran and I think that's where I'm from. We came to Albania and we live in the National Refugee Centre. It's okay. My family has an apartment and we get some food. I started school almost straight away. It was really hard. I hadn't been in school for a long time and I couldn't understand anything. It felt like giving up every day. But then 
I started Albanian lessons with Eralda from Tekora with my brothers and sisters. She's lovely, helps me to understand what I'm meant to do at school, and slowly I'm starting to speak in Albanian. And it doesn't feel quite so scary. I don't want to think about where we've come from. When I do, I remember some of the people there, what it's like, my home. I started to go to some other groups at Tekora too. We have sports club where lots of children go together. It feels easier to play with them there. And I'm starting to make some friends and talk with them a bit at school now. So Tekora has a partnership with the National Refugee Centre that's just a couple of minutes from the centre in Tirana. And we're working with those refugees that have made Tekora their home. But also, us all together. I really believe that as we're going together, journeying together at Vale, we're part of this story together, aren't we? About what God is doing in mission here and in Albania together. So, do you want to? Over here. Um, so, yeah, what we're going to do now is we're just going to play a short video and then we're just going to have some time of prayer to think about um, that mission of both in Albania and here together. Thanks, guys. Hi, You've been part of Tekora's journey, our Baptist family and other Christian friends. You've caught our vision to reach the most marginalised and those who believe they were beyond God's love. A dream of a flourishing community for all with God at the centre. And a lot has happened since 2016. The church we planted has grown and is led by Albanians. The rehab clinic we began is now established, training local physios. There is a genuine community centre in Tirana supporting people from poverty into education and jobs. And with your support, just one year ago, we started a second centre in the nearby city of Duras, where lives are being transformed. We've come a long way together. Haide mene. Haide mene. Hi de mene. Hi de mene. More people come into faith, more people that will accept Jesus and will get baptized, more people that uh, uh, they will uh, love one another and the church will grow. We will see young people that they will uh, lead us, the people that they have learned church only at Tekura and we will see them leading us. We will see Tekura knowing as a place for people to come from other countries and learn from Albanians and experience what God is doing here. We will see more people in our community of all ethnicities and abilities who once thought they had no hope about their future, but with us they will be included, they work with us and they will make the difference. Hi, the man. We will see more children in Tirana and Duros having an excellent education, regardless of their background. There will be more hope, more jobs, and more education. Hi, the man. Hi, the man. We will see more Albanian therapies trained, more people healed, uh, more people with disability uh, being more active in the community, more carers uh, finding respite and a place to belong. Hi, Demene. Hi, Demene. A key goal for us is to be more locally rooted, with more Albanians with real lived experience of the issues in this community, leading us forward in mission over the next few years. Over the next five years, we want you to be more involved and more connected. To not just witness this flourishing, but to get caught up in God's mission 
and in turn for us to be involved in mission on your doorstep too. But we also need to be globally connected, real two-way mission, learning from Albania and what God is doing in your church and in your neighbourhood. Hi, Domene. This is a great opportunity for you and your church to partner with Tekora and be part of all that God is doing in Albania. I guess, I guess the next question is, so what, really? That's a good question, isn't it? So what? I put some, um, some little post-its on your, on your desk or in your hand, what Annie has. What I'd like us to do now, just for a couple of minutes, is I want you to think about mission here in our neighbourhood, on our doorstep. As you've been watching that and hearing some of those stories, I was just wondering, Annie and I were both wondering, has the Lord been prompting us here in Marston to do something not similar, maybe something completely different, but has he been prompting something? Have you been inspired or have you seen some, in some of those images you thought, you know what, yeah, maybe that's, that's something we should think about. Or maybe there's a prayer, maybe you're thinking, do you know what, we need to pray about that. Or maybe you've been thinking, that I, I need to do something about what the Lord is, is telling me to do about mission in my community. I want us to spend just a minute or so just thinking, and then we'll write that down. And as Annie mentioned, the, 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 I guess the goal, the mission of Tekora is to build bridges in our community where we can build people up in community with God at the centre. And that's exactly the same as we're trying to do here, isn't it? We want a community that is focused on Jesus, that is building bridges between people on the very edges of our society and the people that have got stuff and things and hope and connection. So... Just a couple of minutes. I wonder if I might ask some of the band just to play a little bit of music while we're doing it. Is that all right, Dan? Can I just? I know it's a bit off. I know it's a bit off key. It doesn't matter what it is. Just, just play some, some light music. I want you to just to spend a couple of minutes. Just write something down on a piece of paper. Then I want you to come and as a, I come as a, an act of worship, give that to the Lord by placing your thought, prayer, hope on the bridge over here. I know it doesn't look like a bridge, yeah, but this it is. It is no expense spared bridge here. It is a bridge, I promise. <laughs> You're wondering right. what that is. We need to make it a bridge, clearly. <laughs> and just to close this section at the end, we will uh, just say uh, a quick prayer. So, yeah, write on your paper and come and put it up. When you're ready, come forward and just put your uh, prayers on the bridge.
Okay, just a few more seconds. If, if you've got some praise, let's place the bread, please come forward and do that. out, I'm just going to pray, finish with a prayer for this section. I'll say, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you. You are the same God, you know, whether you're in Albania or, or here in Master Mortain. And you know us intimately. You know what's on our hearts. You know the people around us in our lives. You know our struggles. Sometimes all these things seem so vast. Sometimes we hear these stories and we think, I don't know how that connects with here. But in a strange kind of way, all these stories are brought together in this place. Things that are happening there in Albania are also part of the story of Marston too. So Lord, help us. We lift all of these ideas, these thoughts, these strands that you've given us. And help us make sense of them. Help us hear your voice as we move forward as a church in your, in your mission in your church building here in this place. We, say, we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We have a God that sometimes we don't know how things are going to pan out, but he can make the way for us. And we're going to stand, if we can, and sing our next song, which is Waymaker.
Joshua chapter 1 and it's page on 216 if you want to follow it in the church Bible 216 Joshua chapter 1 starting at verse 1 after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord the Lord said to Joshua son of Nun and Moses assistant Moses my servant is dead now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let the book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And now we're turning towards the end of Joshua, spoiler alert, page 237 at the end of chapter 21. And verse 44, it says, The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their ancestors. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord handed all their enemies over to them. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Amen. I'm just going to stop by just checking people and hear me. I don't need to turn this on. I'm on now. Brilliant. That is good news. 
I'm going to be talking about holding on to God's promises, which has been essential in Albania, and surprise, surprise, I think it's pretty essential here to see our church grow and flourish. Regardless of what our circumstances are, regardless of the uncertainties or fears we find in everyday life. I'm going to go straight back into Joshua a second, 21, 44 and 45. Just read that one more time. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their ancestors, not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord gave all of their enemies into their hands, not one of all the Lord's good promises uh, to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. In times of uncertainty, we need to hold on to the promises of God. When God says something to us, he wants us to accept that as an expectation, rather than something that we we place our faith in doubt or fear. I believe, I don't know about you, but I believe the scriptures are just as relevant to our lives today as they were when they were first recorded. And one way of understanding these scriptures, I think is quite helpful, is as a book of promises, a collection of promises. I don't know, someone someone somewhere must have done this, but I read that there are 7,000, I say about 7,400, I think, promises that God makes in the Bible. 7,000 promises. Not just for promises for our future life, but promises for today. And the thing about promises, as you will know, is they're only as good as the person making them. So the really good news about these promises is that it's our God that's making these promises. The promises are not to play with our emotions or to give us a false hope, but to accomplish the promise that the Lord himself has made over our lives. And God wants us to commit to those promises. And receive them not as a concept but as a guarantee that we can hold on to in our lives in every single situation. The story of Joshua. God sends Joshua to go into the promised land and to take over from Moses. A bit daunting that. And so he went into the promised land, the land of Canaan. God was saying to Joshua, you're going to the land I promised you. The land he promised the generations of believers way before. I guess that's where they got the title, The Promised Land, from. God told him that when you go to that land, you are going to possess the land. And this wasn't easy for Joshua, was it? We read in that story that he faced immense struggles and battles, but eventually we read that his enemies failed and all of God's promises were good. Joshua faced these massive uncertainties and obstacles but God came through on every one. I don't know about you this morning as you're sitting there do you ever feel like you're living in a period of uncertainty a time in your life where there is doubt and fear around do you look around at things around you and you feel that well maybe I can see things happening for other people but God's not coming good on the promises he made me I want us to encourage each other this morning. I want you just to look at the person to your left, uh, just for a moment. Introduce yourself if you don't know who they are. And I want you to say something very, very simple to the person next to you. I want you to say that God is a promise keeper. Just tell the person next to you that God is a promise keeper. And once you've done that, I want you to turn to the person on the other side to do the same. And tell them that God is a promise keeper. Let's encourage each other. Because we might believe that genuinely. But in our daily lives, as we try to hold on to the promises of God, we also experience disappointments, don't we? Well, if you're anything like me, you do. Maybe you don't. But I think we do. We experience disappointments. We experience hardships. I know people that have made promises to me in the past and they've let me down. And I know this is going to come as a shock to some of you, but I have made promises to people and I have not come good 
on those promises. But I want you to tell you this morning, I want to remind you this morning, that just because that's happened in our lives, and that's just because that's how we treat other people, this is not how God treats us. It doesn't mean that God is like you and I. Sometimes people talk about the time we're in at the moment, a global climate, as an era of post-truth. We live at a time when we're familiar, we're hearing that phrase, fake news, when politicians have made big promises, I guess, that they can keep. We witness deep fake images and stories on the internet. And we're living in an era, I think, where it's difficult to tell between genuine promises and things that are just downright bogus. In Albania, we saw some pictures there, what it's like. We're coming up to election time, we have politicians come round and they promise the world. I can fix your electricity, I can give you clean drinking water, I can make stuff good for your kids. Just do this and I will make it work. I will make you safe, I will give you hope and success. Just do this one thing. And you're probably wondering, well maybe it's a bit the same here in the UK too, isn't it? Maybe it can feel similar for us here too. People can sometimes, with power, build up hope in communities. They get into power, and in the season of that power, even though they were well-intentioned at the time, they let us down. Why? Because people like you and I can use promises for our own agenda. But God makes promises for our benefit, our best. He's not like us. Our God never runs out of power, and he always always keeps his promises. Back in 2005, we set out a vision that we believed was from the Lord to establish a holistic ministry in Albania to reach people who were on the very edges of society, people who felt disconnected from God and unlovable, the most marginalised, I suppose you could say, the least evangelised, those who basically sometimes the media portrays as people that just want to get on a boat over here And together with a partner organisation, we committed our lives in a 15-year vision. And as a family and with friends, some of whom are here today, we planted ourselves in the promises of of God and Tekor as part of that vision. Bursting promises and prayer as we stepped out and committed ourselves to serving Albania and Albanians. However, about four years into that, Establishing a church and a community centre and a rehab clinic, one of our partners drew back and they said, look, you know, we just can't fund this anymore. And I have to be honest, our, our response to that was nothing short of devastation. Have we received broken promises? We asked ourselves. And if people make promises to us, sometimes we think that those promises are from God, don't we? And when things don't transpire as we hope, we feel let down. And we need to step back from this as we fortunately did. We're able to reframe reframe what's going on and remember that God's promises aren't like ours. They're always faithful. God promises are true for us in every season of our lives. And what he has committed to, he won't see fail. He will enable Tekora and us to flourish as we trust in his promises. Let's look at 2 Peter 1, 3 to 4. It's not on the screen, but I'll just read it out. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness, through this, through these, he has given us very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature having escaped the corruption in this world caused by evil desires. God has given us great and precious promises that we must cherish. But I reckon to to claim these promises, perhaps we need to first know them. That would be fair enough to say, wouldn't it? 7,000 promises in the Bible. I wonder this morning how many of those 7,000 promises do you claim or own for yourselves? I wonder, are you feeling as if you're living in God's promises today? 
There was a global survey done, done a few years ago, and this guy went round churches, um, evangelical churches mostly, around the globe, and he gave them three images. It was, a, it was a survey of how people understand their spiritual life. And they had to choose three, one of three images. The first image was, is your spiritual life, is it like being in Egypt, in, Egypt, like, uh, in slavery, in captivity? Is it like, you know, maybe, you know, you're just trying to please Peter Leisure over there who kind of just, you know, I've, I just, I've got to come to the church because otherwise I'm going to let Peter down. I'm caught and trapped by Peter or Kevin or Anita or Liz or whoever. Or the second one, is it like being in the wilderness? Like the believers wandering around in circles, being kind of stuck. Is your spirituality stuck? Is it like slavery? Is it like stuck? Or lastly, this picture of living in God's promises. The a picture of the promised land. Of every day you wake up and you feel, do you know what? It might, not, might be tough, life might be tough, but I'm living in God's promises today. Well, you're pleased to know, I'm not just leaving it there, the results came in. Because everyone likes to know the results, don't they? The results came in, and uh, yes, right, a staggering 11% said that they were living in the promised land. A massive survey, 11%. My math is correct. At least 89% of Christians, like you and I, felt that their, their spirituality was best illustrated by being stuck or trapped think just for a minute about your spirituality. So I'll say to you the obvious. That God doesn't want our spirituality to feel like that. He wants us to believe that we are living in his kingdom, holding on to his promises. What makes our lives attractive to others is when we're holding on to these promises or living in the promises of God, not just 11% success rates. Just imagine for a minute going into uh, the clinic down the road, you're feeling a bit unwell, you got, finally got through to a GP, you sit down next to them and you tell them your ailments and they give you some medicine, about to prescribe this and you say, well is that any good doc? And they say, well you know, about 11%, about 11% success rate, you'll get 11% chance you'll get better. It's not great, it's not great, I think I might leave. Or how about you go to a school and you're taking your kids there. And uh, you sit down, I sit down with Isaac and Karis, the mayor, and Talia, and uh, the teacher says, uh, well, you know, I've got some good news. Uh, they achieved about 11% this year. It's not going to be good. Or perhaps you, fo you follow uh, MK Dons, and they're going, to lit they're going to win about 11% of all of their games this season. <laughs> I don't know about how you feel about that. God wants us to live in a higher percentage rate, believing in his promises. But often we have so much going on in our lives that let's be honest, the truth of the matter is thinking about God's promises might be lower down the pecking order. And it's especially the case, isn't it, when you are struggling with stuff. When there's crisis in your lives, Perhaps you're just thinking about how to put food on the table or how to care for a loved one or how to deal with situations of abuse or trauma. Some of the people in our community, they're, they're living by getting rubbish out of the rubbish bins, just trying to make ends meet. And we become so focused on the issues on hand, it's understandable, coming up against us each time that the last thing maybe we think about is the promises that God has made over our lives. God's promises for our health. God's promises for our future. Our relationships. Our children. Our provision of practical things in our lives. Just to remind you for a moment. That Abraham waited 25 years for Isaac to be born. Joseph waited 30 years for his dream to ruler to come to fruition. And David was anointed king, but only after years, seven years of waiting. If God has promised to restore you this morning, if God has promised to heal you this morning, if God has promised to provide for you this morning, my suggestion is maybe we should hold on to some of those promises 
in every season of our lives. We read in 2 Peter 3 verse 9, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some people understand slowness. We must have an expectation that God is going to do what he has promised, especially in times when things are uncertain for us. Six quick truths, and they will be quick, about God and his promises this morning. Number one, we've already said to each other inside that God is a promise maker. He's also a promise keeper. God says to Isaiah, it is my word that goes out of my mouth. It not, will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. We as a church here must cultivate a missional culture where, we, where we, there is this understanding that God keeps his promises to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. God can't lie. It's not in his nature. He has promised to do something. It will happen. Number two, God's promises are enduring. They don't stop. They are still relevant today. The Bible says there is nothing we can do to change the minds of God or alter his promises. Number three, God only speaks the truth. He's not like us. He's not trying to keep us entertained. He's not trying to say things to us for the sake of it. He's given us a promise that we can live in that expectation, not playing around with us. Jesus says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God only speaks truth to you this morning. Number four, God is faithful. Even when we are not, and we know we're not. We're not. We might think we're faithful people, we're not. We read in 2 Timothy 2.13, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. Even though we've been unfaithful to God, or haven't done things that lined up for his will, God is faithful always to the promise he's made to you and I. We've got some people in our communities in Albania, and there'll be people here and the communities around us, that at the moment they're running away from God. They're running away. And we need to be a community here that says, no, he wants you to run to him. He's running to you. Fifthly, God's promises are unbreakable. The promises of God over our lives, they can't be broken. Number six, we contextualise everything, but I think that also God's promises are personal. They're for you and I. So often we get caught up in saying, well, that was a promise for Abraham, or that was a promise for Isaac or Joseph. But it's a personal message for you and I, a love letter, a personal promise for our lives, intended for us to believe, own and hold on to whatever the weather. There are lots of promises in, Jonah, in Joshua. Okay, I'm going to be with you. You're going to be successful. You will possess the land. No one will stand against you. I will not fail you. But for 40 years, travelling out of Egypt into the wilderness, hearing all about the promised land coming and so many other promises for him and his community of faith... I reckon it would have been that unsurprising if, jo if Joshua got a bit frustrated, if he started to doubt things. Forty years of wandering, maybe. But Joshua chose to hold on to the promises of God in all the seasons of his doubts. The key for this is that God doesn't want us to be held back by some of the stuff that is holding us back in our lives. Is a lovely verse, I think it's a lovely verse anyway, in, um, in, this, in, in this passage. It says, God says to Joshua, get up and get going. Moses is dead. It's time to get going again. He starts to believe again, holding on to the promises of God again. There are people sitting around you now that need to hear that message. It's time to get going again. Things have finished and now it's a new season. Just as God has promised those in the Bible, Moses, Joshua, the early church, I will be with you. So he says to, to us as he fulfills the promises in our lives too. God's promises also for sharing. And we just think about how we share, how we speak, that our words are powerful. God says to Joshua, keep these promises on your lips. 
reminding us that the words have power to bring hope and change the people around us. We need to be mindful of that when we speak to people in the community of how we treat each other. <clears throat> and lastly, faith is key. It's not our good behaviour or failures that qualify or disqualify us from God's promises, but our faith that God uses to powerfully transform communities in keeping his promises. As we close, let us be strong and immovable. It says in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says, so my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Let us hold tightly to his word, hold tightly to our faith, standing united as a community of faith, whether we're in Albania or in the UK. We are part of a greater story, a greater work that the Lord is doing, a story of transformation, of hope, of unwavering faith. Let's, let's encourage one another to hold on to his promises. Then through our faith, God will bring about the change that we all long to see here in Marston and beyond. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we come before you now standing firm on your promises, just as you commanded Joshua, just as you assured him of victory and your presence. We trust in your faithfulness in our times of challenge here in Marston. You promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you, and we hold on to this with all of our hearts. Give us this morning strength and courage, Lord, to follow your words to meditate on it and act on it according to your will. In moments of doubt, remind us of your steadfast love and the fulfilment of every single promise you have made. May we find rest in your promises. No, not, not one of your promises has failed, and you are our refuge and our fortress. The place in which we place our trust is in you. In Jesus' name. We all say, Amen. In a moment we're going to sing our last song, which is, Great is Thy Faithfulness. For the obvious reasons, right? The obvious reason. God is faithful even when we are not. I want you to think about something just for a moment as this song is about to play. Whilst it's playing, I want you to think about promises. And those three images I gave you earlier. If you are feeling... Do you know what? I feel like I'm living in God's promise. I want you to give God thanks for that and hold on to that. If you're feeling I'm struggling, I'm much more like those other two images. And you would really value someone to pray for you this morning. I want to encourage you just to just come to the front down on the left, on the, on the, on the right hand side <laughs> over here. And someone will pray with you at the end of the song. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand and sing. If the Lord is prompting your heart to respond, I urge you to do so. Someone will pray with you and the Lord will minister to you. Let's stand and sing our final song. Great is thy faithfulness. Stars in their courses.
by turning to the people around us and saying a very simple greeting. We can do this in either Albanian or in English. The Albanian is Pacha Ezotit, which means peace be with you, or just use peace be with you. Remember, actually, that we are brought together in peace by Christ. Let's turn to one another as we say, say that to one another. Pacha Ezotit, peace be with you. For those of you that are new to this church, uh, we do have some refreshments after service. And, um, and...